What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday and welcome to the Greater Emmanuel Temple Bible Study Time. I'm so glad you're here with us, all, all of our family members here at Greater Emmanuel Temple. I want to say hello to you. I miss you all much. Uh, to all of our guests, thanks for joining in. I believe there's something special for you this evening. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your tender mercy. Father, we're asking for favor. We're asking for uh, protection. We're asking for healing. And we're asking, most importantly, for salvation. Father, I pray that you draw those to you. Amen. And they may say, what must I do to be saved, Father? We're just grateful for another day, despite everything that's going on around us, Father. We thank you for the measure of what you've given and allowed in our lives. We're asking that by your Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Father, you will lead us and guide us. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Well, they done done it again. They done shut down the city. Listen, it's okay. Don't nobody panic. Don't nobody be alarmed. I believe that the Lord is allowing this for us to do some things within ourselves once again. Once again. This 2020 is pretty much, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it's a wrap, but it's pretty much all the way different uh, for many of us. So as we're here in the middle of July, the middle of July, we want to... Uh, uh, just encourage you to still hold on, still be strong, stay in your word. It is the best thing for you. Stay prayerful. Um, it is the, the essence and the source of the strength within your relationship with, with God, our Father. Um, everything is going to be all right. Listen, type that for me. Everything is going to be all right. Well, listen, two things, two things. I want everybody to make sure you invite somebody to church this Sunday. Listen, uh, it's giving season. You know, it doesn't have to be December to be giving season, it's giving season, and the Lord has pressed upon our heart to be a blessing to somebody. So we want to bless a family. This Sunday, we, we're going to bless a family to a, a night of dinner on us. Uh, so, but, you, but you have to stay tuned uh, and pay attention to everything that's going to happen in Sunday's worship service. So be with us at 10 a.m. live on Facebook live on Facebook. Make sure you're there. We're going to bless somebody. Listen, the Lord has put it up on us. It's more blessed to give, more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. And it's uh, a giving season for us, and that's what we're going to do. So invite somebody. Invite somebody to uh, church on Sunday. Also, because I've missed all of your faces, and, uh, you know, it's been, what, March, April, May, June, July, five months since we've been in this particular uh, posture, position. Um, and usually I'm talking to you all throughout uh, uh, the Sunday the service or Wednesday nights. Um, so I missed hearing what God has done for you. So look, we're going to do something different. This is what we're about to do. And listen, you don't have to be a member uh, uh, of Greater Emmanuel Temple to join in with us in this. But we're going to have testimony service. That's why we're going to have testimony time. And this is what we're going to do. I need you to record yourself uh, landscape. Let me show you what landscape means for those that don't know. That doesn't mean you hold your phone up like this. That means you hold your phone like this, sideways. I want you to record yourself. Make sure the setting is good, the background is good uh, to your liking, and just tell us how God has been good to you. Share something, some, something that's, uh, that, that you can uh, unequivocally say, God did it for me. Uh, during this particular time. So whatever your testimony is, send it in. Send it in. And we're going to have a testimony service right here. Listen, now, if you're going to sing, don't testify. No, I'm not going to even do that. If you're going to sing, don't testify. If you testify, don't sing. No singing. We got that covered. But just come on in and just share and encourage uh, myself and others uh, of what God has done for you. So this is what I need you to do. By next Wednesday, by next Wednesday, the date, if today is the 14th, let me look at this. Today is the 14th. Next Wednesday is the 22nd. I want you to email your uh, video testimony. That's going to be 60 seconds. Uh, 60 seconds. That's it. Uh, now we're going to edit it. 60 seconds. Um, and uh, email it to info at greateremmanuel.org. Info 
I-N-F-O at greateremmanuel.org. And we're going to have a good old time uh, just sharing the testimonies. I want to see your face. I want to hear uh, what God has done for you during this season, how he is blessing you, how he's bringing you out, how he is healing. Whatever the testimony is, please share. So let's share with our brothers and sisters. It's going to be testimony service, G-E-T style, or testimony service, pandemic style. That's what we're going to call it. So come on uh, and be a part of this in Jesus' name. Now, tonight, I'm going to go forth uh, in our Me, Myself, and I series. We're on part five, and I simply want to go through one of the Proverbs uh, that is in the book of the Bible um, that will bless us. And tonight's topic is going to be thrive, thrive. Uh, make no mistake about it, we are still on our total life change uh, in what we are doing and what we are promoting here. Uh, number one, making sure your relationship with God is intact, is up to par uh, as you're working through it. We all are working through it. Don't let nobody fool you. Each and every one of us is working through our relationship with God, growing in even in these perilous times, figuring it out and trying to navigate through it. Um, but we are planning and we are pressing and we are going forth. And we all, uh, as we look through what total life change is, uh, out of the many attributes of our transformed life, I believe that thriving is one of the things that we all should be experiencing as a child of God. Well, when you thrive, you grow or you develop well. Uh, there's a lot of people growing and they're growing uh, in a way that's not conducive to holiness. They're growing in a way that's not beneficial to them. But I would uh, argue where some may say they're growing, I would say that they're dying. And so as believers, we should be thriving uh, or uh, vigorously. We should be prospering. We should be flourishing uh, as believers, as children of God, even during this time. Now, I, it does not matter uh, what tax bracket you're in. It does not matter what city you live in. It does not matter whether you're renting, owning, buying, uh, whatever, however, staying with somebody. Um, some of these situations are temporary. Uh, they are not permanent. But whatever, wherever you are in your life, it should be a goal of yours to be thriving, to be growing. Um, but we have to look at this uh, as we read the word and the word of God is how I try to base my life upon. I'm, I don't get it right all the time, but I have experiences where I know uh, that I should have followed the word of God. I have things that, that in which I have did some things and I said, I thank God that I followed his word. But in the word of God, there are things that you will notice. There is always instruction before there's promise. There's always instruction and God gives instructions to us in his word. But the problem, problem that I see most of the time is many people want the promise, uh, but they don't they, they want to bypass the instruction. They want to skip over the instruction. But God gives instructions for us in our living. Um, and this right here is where a lot of people come to church. Church is cool. They like music. They like the people. But when it comes to obedience to the word of God, uh, you'll find that a lot of people will uh, lose hope and they'll quit because a lot of people don't like to be told what to do. They don't like to, they, they don't like to follow instructions. Many people come to me and they say, well, Pastor, I just don't like to do it. Well, I'm sorry, I can't work with you. You don't like instructions. Even I have to follow instructions. But here in the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverb number three, we're going to go through here, and I'm going to give you some pillars that can help you as you are on your journey toward thriving. Um, Sunday, we had a wonderful message, how it was best for me. It was best for me. And, and, I, and I stated how uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. The word of God will lead you and guide you as you make the decisions that are best for you. Well, uh, the first thing today I want to bring to the light as a pillar is your priorities. Your priorities have to be intact. We should be establishing our priorities uh, according to the word of God. 
We should be establishing our priorities according to the word of God. And right off the bat in Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verse 1 through 4, you'll see exactly um, what the word is saying as he first gives an instruction. As he gives an instruction, he says, uh, verse 1, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. That is an instruction. And then the promise is, right after that, if we obey that instruction, verse 2 says, For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. That's the, that's the promise right there. And if we follow the instruction, uh, verse three says, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you, but bind them around your neck uh, uh, and write them on the tablet of your heart. And then here gives you another promise after that instruction. If you obey those things, he says, so you will find favor and good success, favor and good success. That's thriving in my book. Uh, you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Oh, yes, I want to find favor in the sight of God first and success in the sight of God. But I don't mind finding a little favor in the sight of man. Uh, a lot of us worked for people or started some things and uh, needed relationships. Uh, and, and, and all of a sudden, it was God that allowed those things to happen. I believe that with all of my heart. Here he said, you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man, we have to understand and we have to make sure our priorities are in order. So let's give a priority check. One, uh, the first thing is worship. Uh, you have to love uh, uh, above, uh, above all. You have to love God and worship him in spirit and truth. Uh, we have to have fellowship. Uh, that's one of our priorities. Fellowship, compassion uh, above regulations. We have to know how to treat each other. Uh, discipleship, which I'm huge on discipleship. That's the growth uh, that you must be experiencing above comfort. Sometimes we'll get uh, outside of the comfort zone because we are doing what God has called us, and that's a part of our growth. Then there's ministry, service above office. Skip what title you have, but the, 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 the heart that in which you operate, that's what matters in these times. It's service above office. And then the mission. It must be the mission over uh, any ambition, uh, because sometimes we'll get into our own ambition and not focus on what the mission of God is. So here we have to make sure our priorities are in order. The second pillar that I want to give you uh, tonight is reliance. Oh, yeah. We all need to rely on something and will rely on something one, one way or another. But we have to rely on the wisdom and the power of God uh, and not our own understanding. We have to understand it. You may think you know a lot. Amen. You may act like you know a lot. You may know a lot, but you do not know more than God our Father knows about us or this world that we live in, this temporary space that we're living in on this earth, uh, uh, enclosed in this flesh. God knows more about everything than we could ever imagine. So our reliance has to be on God's wisdom and his power. So in verse uh, uh, verse five, uh, here's an instruction. He says, trust in who? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. They'll, those are instructions. Trust in him. Lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him. And then the promise and he will make straight your path or he will direct your Past. Listen, you can never uh, rely on God if your perception is limited to only what you can see. Uh, many people only go off of what they can see with their natural eyes. Uh, but when you begin to rely on God, you understand that there's some things that he's working on that we cannot see. Uh, the Bible says uh, we do not look at things that can be seen. We look at the things that cannot be seen. The things that that can be seen will come to an end. But the things that can, cannot be seen will last forever. That's in, uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. We have to learn, however, how to rely and trust uh, our God. Uh, it requires the activation of, I believe, our sixth sense, uh, which is our eyes of faith. Amen. Many times I sit and I envision 
through my faith eyes and I see what God, amen, ha has in front of me. I use my imagination and I begin to align it with the things that God has spoken to my life personally, not only just for Nissan, but uh, according to Gre uh, Greater Emmanuel Temple and, and, the, and the things that God has uh, uh, spoken to me on, on, on how we should handle things and how things should look. I'm not relying on what I can see, amen, because if I rely so, solely on what I can see, I would uh, put myself in a place where I'm just comfortable. I I'd operate on comfort, but I understand that ministry and God's way is not just about comfort. It's not about comfort. It is about, amen, the work being done. And so Sunday, I talked to you about uh, the importance of decisions. And sometimes we have to make these hard decisions and, and we have to be careful of who we're listening to, uh, even in these times. But we know that God knows best for each and every one of us. So we rely on him. Now, I'm not saying that your thinking and your cognitive skills, amen, is minute, but to God, in comparison to God, it is minute. Listen, but you have to be led by him, amen, and make sure you know that it is him who is leading you, amen, because a lot of people say God said, God said, God said, and we find out that God ain't said a word according to that matter. But listen, we, as you have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit, and there is one Holy Spirit. There is not a variation of the Holy Spirit, amen. There is one Spirit, amen, and he's trying to draw us to a place where we rely on God, our Father. So we have to comply and rely on God's order. The next verse in chapter 3, verse 7, it says, be not wise in your own eyes. This is another instruction. Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This is instruction from God. Be not wise in our own eyes and what we think. Amen. And sometimes we have to just walk away and turn away from evil because evil is pulling at us every day, pulling at us in every angle, whether it's in your relationship, whether it's on your job. Amen. Whether it's in your neighborhood, whether it's with these issues that is that is happening right now in our world. It says, be not wise in your own eyes, but turn away from evil. Fear the Lord and turn away. Turn away from evil. And then the promise in verse eight says it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment and refreshment to your bones. Listen, God has a wonderful plan for our future. Yes, he does. He has something that is, that is amazing for us. But what happens is we have to understand this third pillar, which is what I just read. And that is obedience. We have to be obedient to the word of God. All right. He 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 is uh, uh, in a place where he's pulling from us. He's he, he's placing us in positions. Amen. And to test us on our obedience to him. Amen. And the faith is the ability to see our future based on his promise and his guidance. But we must be obedient. We must be obedient to God. Amen. Not trusting, amen, our own eyes, but seeing what God has for us. Listen, you can follow your own eyes sometimes and your eyes can be playing tricks on you. Don't be tricked by your own flesh, but rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fourth pillar, the fourth thing I'm going to give you is sowing. Listen, I believe in planting. I believe in uh, 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 giving. I believe in placing things wherever God says to place it. We have to learn as individuals how to plant. We acknowledge God as our ruler. Amen. By giving back concerning things that he's given to each and every one of us. And I'm not just talking about our finances, amen, but I'm talking about our energy and our space, amen, and all the things that God has given us, amen. We have to give it back to God. What you do to the least of these, you do to him, amen. And he said here in verse 9 of chapter 3, here's the instruction. He says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with your, your first fruits of all of your produce. Honor him with whatever you have, amen, those things that are valuable valuable to you. And then the promise follows in verse 10. He says, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. You have to understand that sowing is a part of the universal and the natural law of giving. Amen. We have to be generous 
in, in what we do. We have to be generous. The church should be generous. We should be generous to uh, our churches. We should be generous to organizations that are, that are beneficial to humanity. We, we should be uh, individuals that do not hold on to everything, but we have to learn how to be givers. Amen. Even giving into the kingdom of God because uh, uh, money is a kingdom resource. We're able to do things because, amen, individuals give. So that's how, amen, we operate. We want to be in the community. We want to be, amen, paying attention to what is happening in our, uh, our space of worship and not only our space of worship, but in our surrounding, amen, places. So we must give, amen. You can never have a time of harvest uh, in the future unless you start giving. Amen. Don't just see everybody else going through a harvest. Amen. And they've sown and they put in time and energy and their finances and you're just sitting back on the side talking about them. No, at some point in time, you have to start learning how to sow. I believe in teaching my children. Even now, they're young, 12, 10, 7, teaching them how to sow, how to give. I give you allowance. Amen. You must uh, uh, put it in your heart that you want to give, amen, to the kingdom work. So I teach them how to tithe. It is very important. And they'll understand the benefits of sowing into God's kingdom and not just into the church, but when it comes time to offer your services and your volunteering uh, 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 skills, do whatever they can to be a blessing to others. And I believe God will reward them. Listen, but we have to make sure our attitude is right because you can be sincere and willing to uh, contribute. But if your attitude, amen, is, is, is behind you and it's just uh, uh, nasty and how you look at things and talk about everybody, that will not bless your life. It is better to give God, amen, uh, of the first part, amen, the first part of your gifts, your, the first part of your increase. We have to understand sowing is a part of it. So you want to thrive, you have to sow. It is a principle that you cannot get around. You cannot get around. All right, let's go on to the next one, and that is pliability. How flexible are you? Are you able to be taught, or do you know everything? Uh, are you teachable? Um, listen, let me tell you something. God will do some things that we don't like just to teach us. He'll allow us to experience brokenness uh, and pliability, amen, so that uh, he can test us and see exactly where we are in him. And it should be a wake-up call, amen. We have to go through this. Sometimes our heart is broken, amen. But I believe that sometimes when the heart is broken and the spirit is broken, God will step in, amen, and that is where maturity can start to begin. Because you can say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to go through what I put myself into the last time. I want to make sure I'm doing right this time. I want to get it right. How many times will you fall on your head before you make a decision to correct yourself? Amen. How many times will you allow the enemy to pull you down? Amen. Doing the same thing, using the same tricks. At some point, we have to see that God, amen, can teach us something in that moment. And the question is, are you pliable? Uh, are you ready towards uh, to go towards maturity? Well, the scripture says in verse 11 through 12, it says, my son, do not despise, excuse me, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. Oh, he says in verse 12, or the Lord reproves him who whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. You have to admit Listen, you don't know everything, so allow humility to be your friend. Amen. Allow God to work in your life. Allow God to be a blessing to you and allow him to teach you. Amen. As you go through these rough times in your life. Oh, listen here. Let me tell you something. Every come up is not a come up. Let me let me let me just say that uh, if, if, if you're not paying attention, something that you call a blessing could in, in, in the future be a disaster if you're not ready when it comes. So you have to position yourself. Amen. And we have to understand this is why God wants to shape us. He wants to shape us first. He wants to he wants to form us. Amen. Into what we can be to be the best who we can be while we are on this earth wrapped in this earthly flesh. Listen, we have to be 
being ready to receive his blessings, amen, that he wants to pour on us. But the question is, are we uh, 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 experiencing or operating in pliability? Are we allowing God to bend us and shape us and make ourselves, amen, who he wants us to be? Listen, let me tell you this. There's time right now for you to prepare while we're sitting at home, while things are changing yet once again. Amen. It's preparation time. It's time to get in our word. It's time. I've been saying this as we're working on the total man. It's time to pray. It's time to ask for forgiveness. It's time to uh, 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 be humble. Don't walk around with all that pride. Amen. Let, I, I know that God has allowed you to be in this space. Let him work on you when you're in this space and correction is a vital part of discipline. He wants to correct many of us. Amen. And he wants to teach us. He wants to train us and push us to a better place in him. Uh, some people don't like like correction. They don't like discipline. It sounds negative to many people because uh, often the disciplinarians aren't loving. But don't you thank God for people who love you and will discipline you with Love. Amen. But let me share this with you. Be careful of rebelling against discipline. Amen. And refusing to repent. Be careful of, of walking around with that arrogant space of pride. That is just what Satan walked around with. Amen. No, no, no. We shall not walk into that space. We shall walk in humility and walk in repentance. Amen. God can use that bad experience or that crisis and draw you back to him. But listen, do not play with God. Don't play with him. Amen. Make yourself ready to receive his, his instruction and his correction. Be pliable. Amen. Allow him to work on you. So pillar number six for you today is education. I can't stress this enough. There is nothing wrong with educating yourself. Amen. Not only in this world, but even concerning the things of God. But to be educated is to receive intellectual moral and social instruction. Be educated, saints. I cannot stress this enough. I, I try to ask God, amen, not try. Let me take that back. I ask God every day and every time I'm getting ready to bring something to you, Lord, please educate me on it. Lord, I do not want to be guilty of mishandling your word like many are guilty of mishandling God's word and just throwing it at people, amen, and have people so confused and so jacked up. Listen, we have to understand that God wants to educate us. He tells us to study, to show ourselves approved. Listen, so your intellect, the faculty of reasoning and understanding, amen, your intellect must be on point. The spirit can help you with that. Your morality uh, must be on point. The, the moral uh, cognitive space you have concerning the principles versus right or wrong. That has to be on point. Amen. And in your social capacity, uh, your, your uh, ability to be able to relate and deal with other people, it must be on point. So we have to be educated on these things. And the word gives us enough to educate us concerning this space. We have to take divine education and divine wisdom uh, by diligently studying the word of God. So here again in Proverbs uh, chapter three, verse 13, let me read a few verses here, a few more. Uh, it said, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding for the gain from her is better than gain from silver and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her long life is in her right hand and her left hand are riches and honor. Oh, yes. Then verse 17 says her ways are way her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree. Verse 18. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her and those who hold her fast are called blessed. Verse 19 goes on to say, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth and by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broke open and the clouds drop down the dew. And then he goes on and says, after that, he gives an instruction in verse 21. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Verse 22 says, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. 
here is another promise. Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not stumble. But if you lie down, you will not be afraid. And when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Oh, sweet, sweet sleep. Huh. Oh, I'm going to sleep good tonight. I hope you sleep good tonight. Amen. After you talk to God about uh, uh, where you are. So we understand that he's giving us instructions to be educated in him. Learn more about him. Then the next one, uh, the next pillar is in relation to even what I said Sunday concerning Ruth, talking about faith based decisions. Amen. We have to learn how to take faith steps. It's not really risk taking. It's faith steps. Don't ever be afraid to take a step of faith oh, or a leap of faith. Like one of one of my favorite movies are funny movies, a leap of faith. Amen. Saying I'm going to do this. Amen. Even though I don't know where the resources are going to come from. I don't know how it's going to work in my favor. But Lord, if you promised this to me, amen, and showed me this, I know there has to be some truth to it. So I'm taking a step of faith. And listen, verse 25 goes on to say here, here's an instruction. Do not be afraid of sudden terror or the ruin of the wicked when it comes. But here's the promise for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Don't be afraid to take that uh, leap of faith, that step of faith. No step, no reward, no risk, no reward. You have to trust God, trust him in all that you do. And then the next pillar. Oh, I'm almost to the end. Uh, open handedness. You got to have compassion and sympathy uh, of a certain standard in which you trust God doing it his way like Jesus did, especially when it comes to those that may be less fortunate than you are. You have to trust him. Amen. And know how to do good concerning these times to people who could use your help. Listen, you, ain't, you may not be able to help everybody, but God will bring people in your path that you can help. And here in verse 27, it says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. Amen. When it is in your power to do it, in your power to do it. Verse 28 says, do not say to your neighbor, go and come again tomorrow. I will give it when you have it with you. You have to understand open handedness is a part of your thriving when you can bless others, be a blessing. I, I, I'm going to find somebody to bless tomorrow. Amen. I, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go strategically to look for somebody to be a blessing to. Amen. Why? Because if God has blessed me, why not bless someone else? Amen. And like I said, you can't you're not responsible for the entire world, but you can do your part. Oh, if you do your part, I believe there's something contagious, amen, that will happen, amen, around this earth when we begin to act like the believers, walk like believers, operate like believers, trust like believers, amen, and look at things like believers. We have to understand what that is as we often, uh, often offer open handedness. And then the next one, as we're talking about people, amen, and making a difference in this earth and in our communities, the believers have to walk in unity. We have to be at peace with people. We have to walk in unity. Let me say this, uh, as it says in, in verse 29 through 30, it says, do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. And also it says, do not contend with man, a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. We have to trust God. We have to understand, amen, how to walk in unity with our brothers and sisters. We may disagree with little things here and there, but if we cause that to be a wedge in between us and we all call ourselves brothers and children of God, uh, something ain't right. And we have to go back to the drawing board. And then this last one I want to give you, amen, uh, is uh, a, a verse 31 through 32. And I believe this is how you can find satisfaction in God. Uh, and it's through his confidence. It says in verse 31, do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. Let me say that again. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious person is an abomination to the Lord, but the upright are in his confidence. So we have to watch who we are around. And when we are in that uh, and when we are in God's confidence, I believe at that point we are in what should be satisfaction for the believer. And our satisfaction should be even in his confidence as he's as he sees his children, as he's told us that our labor 
is not in vain. Amen. As we're trusting in him, we should be satisfied in doing the will and the work of God, our king. So I want to just button this off here. What are the last few scriptures here? Uh, verse 33 says the Lord's curse curse is on the house of the wicked. Know that. So if there's any wicked out there, your house is cursed according to the word of God. I don't care what you do. You can operate uh, uh, systematically uh, or systemically, whatever you are. Let me tell you something. Your house is cursed. Amen. Uh, if you are wicked, but it says he blesses the dwelling of the righteous and toward the scorners, he is scornful. But to the humble, he gives favor. And he says the wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. So my question as we've gone through all of these things and as you're looking at yourself, yeah, me, myself and I, we're looking at it from a certain position, but we also want to thrive. Amen. We're not looking at it from evil, selfish ambition, but we're looking at taking care of ourselves according to the word of the Lord. Amen. My question is, as we're in the middle of July, is how will you end this year? How will you personally in this year, what responsibilities, amen, will you take on? What will you accept responsibility for? What is your uh, obedience track concerning the things of God? Uh, will you follow the things of the Lord? How will you walk? Will you walk in unity? Will you sow discord? Will you be messy? Will you cause problems everywhere you go? Whatever the case may be, these 10 things that I gave you tonight, amen, I believe they will help you Thrive, And if you were to use the, 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 the letters of every word that I gave, priority, reliance, obedience, sowing, pliability, education, risk taking, open handedness, unity and success. What that spells, that spells prosperous. That spells prosperous. And that is to succeed in material terms, to be financially successful. But I believe even as uh, the writer wrote in third John, uh, verse two, that he says, I, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health and that you may prosper even as your soul prospers. OK, so we have to understand. I believe that God uh, wants to bless us and wants to keep us. And I want he wants our soul to prosper. He wants our life to prosper. Now, I'm not saying that what I'm not talking about. Don't misconstrue it. I'm not talking about you having all the money in the world. Uh, but when you prosper in him, then you're happy. When you prosper in him, then you have peace. And this is what God wants to do for each and, of, each and every one of us. He wants us to thrive. So I want everybody to type thrive, type thrive. As we, uh, this series is coming to an end, uh, you have to make some goals for yourself and you do everything. You must do everything you can to thrive. All right. God has something for you. Amen. And it's for you. And ain't what he has for you is not for me. But my goal is, as a pastor of this church and those for those that are even listening and joining in tonight is that you make a decision to thrive in your life. Amen. While things are happening, while depression is trying to kill many of us, is killing many of us. Amen. I want us to tap in to the word of God and see who God is and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Be filled with his spirit. Let it lead you and guide you in all truth. My prayer for you today. God bless everyone that's watching, everyone that is paying attention, everyone that is listening. Be with them as they're on their personal journey with you. Help them. Bless them. Instruct them. Instruct all of us and then bless us. Father, we need your love. We need whatever you have for us because whatever you have for us is good. No matter how it feels sometimes, it's good. God, I say thank you for what you're, you are doing, what you have done, and for what you're even going to do in this time. I love you. I give your name praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm glad that you were with us here tonight. Be with us next week. We've got something special for you next Wednesday in Bible study. Tell a friend. But more importantly, I'm looking forward to seeing you this Sunday. Amen. We're going to have a good time. Invite somebody. Share this with a friend. Amen. That this could be a blessing to just share it, copy it, paste it, send it to somebody. I love you. I miss you. I'll see you this Sunday. God bless.
If you would like to sow into what Greater Emmanuel Temple is doing here in Linwood, we have four ways for you to do so. First, you can give on our mobile app. Just type Greater Emmanuel Temple into your app store, hit download, and then give. Next, you can give online at our website at greateremmanuel.org slash donate. Or you can give on Cash App at dollar sign GET FAM. Lastly, you can give by texting GET FAM to 1 364 4483. Thank you for your gift. We look forward to seeing you on our online weekly services.